Right, gentlemen, so next presenter, Tom Evans. Where's Tom? He's ready. Uh, have you presented before, Tom? No. Another first time. So let's start with applause starting in this corner. We'll slowly work along the room. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, and we'll come back to the corner. because that's what we're told to do. If you take a test and you say, I don't know, then you get an F. If you ask a surgeon which of your limbs they were about to amputate, and they say, I don't know, uh, you probably start looking for a new hospital. If you ask a politician something like, should we privatise the NHS? Then you'd like a clear answer, right? But I think that actually, once in a while, I'd like a politician to say, I don't know. Because when you know something, you stop questioning it. If you know that privatising the NHS or starting a war with Iran would be a good thing, then why bother to consider the argument that it might actually be a colossal fucker? <laughs> if you know that, if you know that, oh, <laughs> on the other hand, of course, um, if you know that it's a bad thing, uh, why start to consider uh, whether it might actually do some good? So, knowing something is the lazy option. When you say, I don't know, you're recognising the sheer, mind-melting, befuddling complexity of the world that we live in. And the thing is, there are actually lots of different ways of knowing and not knowing something too. They were, Don Brunsfeld, of all people, uh, actually explained this quite well. Uh, he said, there are known knowns, there are things that we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns, things that we know that we don't know. But there are also unknown unknowns to things that we do not know, we don't know. So the plain English campaign called that, that speech the worst abuse of English language. <laughs> but he was actually saying something really interesting, which is that there are different ways of knowing or not knowing something. So there are some things you know, like what's on this slide. There are some things you know you don't know, like what's going to be on my next slide. But there are lots of things that you don't know that you don't know. So you can plan for things that you know about and calculate probabilities for things that you know you don't know about. But how do you even try to prepare for something that you don't know you don't know? <laughs> so I know no can often cause something known as an outside context problem. Uh, so you've got your game plan, uh, you're going to bat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If, if you were a financial trader in late 2001, you would have had plans and tools and systems to deal with almost any kind of financial problem you could imagine, from stock market wobbles to full on crashes. Uh, but of course, none of those plans were really any use when someone flew two planes into the World Trade Center. So sometimes you know, and sometimes you don't know, and sometimes you don't know you don't know, but sometimes there just isn't a thing to know. So there's a classic thought experiment from philosophy called the Sorites Paradox that illustrates this. So imagine you've got a big heap of sand. So everyone knows what a heap is, right? Now if you take away one grain of sand, is it still a heap? Do you think that ever taking one grain of sand away can ever make that pile turn it from a heap into not a heap? No, because if you keep taking away grains of sand, one grain at a time, at some point you'll be left with one grain which, by deduction, has never stopped being a heap. So the question is, at what point did that heap stop being a heap? But how many grains of sand even make it? Was it 20 or 200 or 2,000? Where do you draw the line? And this applies on a more practical level as well. How many deaths make a war just or unjust? And at what point during pregnancy does a lump of cells become a person? So the answer to questions like these is moot. <laughs> moot is a concept from Zen Buddhism that means unask your question, because the question does not make sense. <laughs> Moot says, there is no line to be drawn. So it's easy to think that all questions have yes or no answers, but that's really not the way the world works. 
They're the language that we use to communicate with each other and describe the world around us and talk about ideas seems precise, but is actually incredibly vague. It's not normally a problem, but when you start asking questions like, should we privatise the NHS or should we start a war with Iran, it's actually really easy to lose all those shades of grey. Just because someone has asked a question doesn't mean that that question has an answer. So when you think about it, saying I don't know isn't an expression of ignorance, it's really the only sensible answer to an illogical world. So I think you'll all think about saying more. <laughs>